Welcome back guys, this is a quick update video on my progress in water cooling my GTX 1080s in SLI. I've had the loop running continuously for about an hour now, and since I only redid the fittings around my graphics cards, I think about three hours or so of leak testing and getting the air bubbles out should be enough. If it's a, if it's a loop built from scratch, then I'd recommend at least six hours of leak testing provided you do a lot of wiggling from side to side and get most of the air bubbles out. I really don't see how you could spring a leak around anywhere, around the fittings or the tubes if you've had it running for six hours. But I was very efficient in the progress in redoing the loop. I only changed out this tube. The rest of the tubes were from the existing water cooling loop. And the only fittings that I did were the ones around the graphics cards and this one. But yeah, I'm very happy with how efficiently the progress was able to progress. And all of my lube components are exactly the same as always. I will link all the components I used in my build in the video description, as well as the best prices usually on Amazon on where to buy them. And I do have a video up already of the step-by-step -step process of how to water cool your graphics cards but there were significantly fewer complications in getting water blocks on my GTX 1080s than when I put the water blocks on my GTX 980s. They did Loctite the back plates onto the PCB, but it was a lot easier to get the back plate off than it was to get the back plate off on my 980s. Because if you remember my 980 build update video, I did have to take an electric the Walt to my back plate to be able to get it off because I ended up stripping some of the screws that I use. Yeah, the blue stuff is thread locker, which is overkill for graphics cards. I've mounted scopes on long action rifles without needing Loctite on the scope rings before. So it confuses me to no end why manufacturers insist upon having their graphics cards ship with Loctite securing the back plate to the graphics cards. But my next video will probably either be a benchmark video after I booted the system or it will be the step-by-step -step guide on how I attach the water blocks to the GTX 1080s. So thank you very much for watching this video. I'll let the loop run for maybe two or three more hours. I don't feel you need it as much leak testing and or air bubble killing time for a redone loop, even especially since I was able to reuse some of the water. I didn't do a complete drain. I was able to keep, not in here obviously, I was able to keep the water in the side radiator, the bottom radiator. The only water in the loop that I drained completely were from the top radiator and the graphics cards areas. So. After running the loop for a few more hours, I will be booting and hope that I didn't break anything or break anything when I attached the water blocks. I forgot to mention that I did have to use pliers. Ah, dropped it. I did have to use pliers to get the standoffs for the black back plate screws off of the graphics cards. I tried to use a hex extractor drill bits, but it just couldn't get enough grip to move the standoffs. And I also tried needle nose pliers, but again, couldn't get enough grip to get the necessary torque to get the standoffs off. But thank you guys for watching this update video. My next video again will be after I booted or step-by-step -step guide on attaching the water blocks. I've gone ahead and booted, and as it turns out, I did not break my 1080s with using pliers to remove the standoffs. Here they are installed with the latest driver supporting them. Next is overclocking and my video showing overclocking results. Thanks guys for watching.